But there is a certain guild in a certain town that soars high above the rest. One from which countless legends have been born. A guild that will no doubt continue to create legends well into the future. Its name is Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale, like many fantasy stories, takes place in a world where people can use magic. However, in Fairy Tale, each person specializes in a certain type of magic and doesn't seem to be able to do anything else besides what they specialize in. The main character, Natsu Dragniel, specializes in Dragon Slayer Fire Magic, so it's essentially fire magic made to kill dragons. However, this is where things get interesting. The concept of fairy tale is very promising and the first few arcs of fairy tale are very good. We start off with an interesting premise being introduced in the world of Magnolia and referencing this guild called fairy tale in which the theory is named and we meet Noctu and Lucy, the two leads of the theory. And they go on an adventure, mostly standard cliche shonen thing. Nothing amazing, but the concept looks intriguing enough to grip people and make them want to come on in. After their first adventure together, Natsu takes Lucy to the fairy tale guild where she meets a ton of generic shonen cliches. And the next arc is almost like a in-canon filler arc. Not much happens, we just meet some of the cast and Natsu and Lucy go on this small time mission. It's almost like if Naruto's first C-Rank dimension had gone as planned and they had not encountered Zabuza and all they have fought were bandits. It's a lot like that. Nothing very dangerous, no real tension, but nothing detriment to the series because during the arc you do build the characters and the relationship between Natsu and Lucy. Which by the way is probably the most important relationship in this series because of the fact that these are our two main characters. So here we have a theory that has a lot of promise, an interesting premise, and semi-decent likable character. Now why don't we fast forward a few years and see what happens. This is a message to Hiro Mashima on behalf of all Laxus fans everywhere. Fuck you, Hiro Mashima. From a to from a storytelling standpoint, Fairy Tale is one of the worst series. Well, correction, one of the worst shonen. Well, shonen magazine shows same same thing. One of the worst shonen I've read. So what happened? How did Fairy Tale become arguably more hated than Sword Art Online? What did Fairy Tale do to get this hated? What happened? To figure this out, I'm going to compare it to two of the other big three. Naruto and One Piece. I'm not going to compare it to Bleach because I honestly don't know how to factor Ichigo into this equation that we're going to be doing. But yeah, let's talk about what I'm going to be calling the goal. The most important thing in a long-running shonen. Luffy wants to obtain the legendary treasure One Piece and become King of the Pirates. To do this, he must travel the Grand Line, explore various islands, and become one of the strongest guys around. Naruto wants to become the Hokage. To do this, Naruto needs to train and become stronger and fight various opponents and overcome various obstacles to become the Hokage, the strongest ninja in his village. Both Luffy and Naruto's goals have one thing in common. Their goals are very vague while also being definitive. With the format of a long-running shonen, you need to be able to continuously get closer to the goals while also making it so it can go on for as long as necessary. One Piece has been going on for over 800 chapters. The goals are designed in a way where they keep the reader interested. Is Luffy going to be Pirate King? Will Naruto become Hokage for an extended period of time? The problem 
with this is that if the goal isn't definitive but also vague, there is the chance that the character will obtain it within the story. Which, if that's the major narrative of the shonen, then that's a problem because this theory may need to go on for another five years. So Naruto and Luffy's goals are designed in a way where they can keep on going forever. Luffy can keep on going to new islands as long as Oda has ideas. Naruto can keep on fighting strong opponents as long as Kichi has ideas, and then eventually, when they think it's time, they can wrap everything up in a final climactic arc that ties all the loose strings and have them become the Pirate King and the Hokage respectively. However, now we need to talk about Natsu's goal. What is Natsu's goal? To find his father, Igneal. The problem with this is, this isn't the main driving force of the story. And now, this can be done. Naruto does this well. It's never about him becoming Hokage. The story is the journey to get there. The fights he had that make him stronger. The things he learned. That doesn't work with a goal like this when you need to find something. This theory should be Natsu and a group of people traveling the world looking for Igneal, but it isn't. Natsu never really actively looked for him, but died for a couple minor detours. In fact, when he does look for Igneal, it's never even the main focus of the arc. And even then, it's not a defined goal. It takes hundreds of chapters for us to learn anything about Igneal. We don't even really learn anything, he just kind of shows up one day. So there's no real narrative there. There's no Natsu going around like, I'm gonna find Igneal. So you, you're left wondering, is this Natsu's story at all? What is the purpose of this story existing? If I don't like something, why should I keep reading? A great thing about Naruto is that Kishimoto in Chapter 3 gave Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke individual goals. And those goals in some cases did change throughout the series, but you always wanted to know where these goals would take these three characters. So even if you weren't enjoying something, you would be like, I will Naruto become Hokage? Will Sasuke get his revenge? Will Sakura get in Sasuke's pants, I guess, I don't know. But we still kept reading, because we wanted to know where these characters ended up. If these characters don't have goals beyond, I want to keep my friends safe, I'm gonna beat your ass because you hurt my friend, then there's no narrative. It's just the same repeating plotline every arc. The fan service and the characters borderline ruin this series. The fan service is just ridiculous. The fact that actual battles that are meant to be taken seriously are between two females are turned into like whimsu competition. It's like, no, I'm, I'm here to watch something serious. You can't. Kiro Makiba will take a serious moment and just use it as an excuse to turn his manga into softcore porn. And it really hurts the narrative because it destroys all the tension of that moment. Like, when you're the dragon, it's about to kill Lucy, and it shows that its ability is to make her clothes disappear. I'm like, oh, so Lucy's in, like, no danger then. Okay, I guess, should I laugh that her clothes are gone? That's not really funny. I wanted to see a fight. I wanted to see the dragon do something cool. No, it's not going to do anything cool. Of course it's not. It's Hiro Mashima. Hiro Mashima will use anything as an excuse to draw fan service. And it gets to the point where the reader doesn't want fan service anymore. Like, we don't read this manga for fan service. Hiromashima, there's a thing called hentai. It, it translates to porn. If you want to watch something like that, you can go watch porn. We're not reading fairy tale for that. Stop assuming we are. That is this series, probably one of its biggest flaws. It focuses way too much on the fan service, and as I said before, it kills the tension all the time. Not that there's any tension in this series, but we'll get to that later when we talk about how Fairy Tail handles death. In air quotes, death. Like that exists in this theory. But the point is, is that it's not just the fan service, but also the characters. The characters in this theory are not good, guys. 
They're just not. When I try to think of Gray, I remember he had a sad backstory, which just in an anime. A sad backstory with a dead parent did not make a character unique. By the way, his, his mother died or something, and he had ice power. And he likes to strip a lot because he's never cold. I don't know. Like, it just doesn't work. Hero Mashima seems to think gags and sad backstories make a character good. No, a character needs to be likable, memorable. I need to remember these characters. There's a reason I remember the minor characters in One Piece, the minor characters in Naruto. Even in Bleach, I remember a lot of the minor characters. But I don't remember, I don't know the names of all the people in the Fairy Tale Guild. Not because I never bothered, because I never was given a reason to care about half of these people. And it's very sad, dude. I feel like Hiromashima probably could have done better. He just didn't do it. And I'm not gonna crash on the guy's work ethic. And there's one thing I will give this theory that Hiromashima would sometimes put out like two or three chapters a week. He's an amazing when it comes to like working. The fact that he can put out so many chapters amazes me. Because he actually draws backgrounds. He's not like Kubo who just draws a ton of Brent, he puts in backgrounds and all of that stuff. So that's very impressive to me. But even besides that, the characters aren't good. Like, the characters are bastardized all the time. And then we get to the big one. The one shot. Oh my god. Some of this series, only good characters have been ruined by friendship power-ups and one shot. I think you'll probably all know if you read the manga, I didn't even read the manga at the time, and this is such bad writing, I actually had to go and read the chapter to believe it with my own eyes. But because she's Urza. There was a point where Urza won a fight when all the logic in the series, I don't know everything was going on, dictated she couldn't win the fight. And guess what? She won. You want to know what explanation we got for Urza winning? Because she's Urza. Or the time thing left. Fairy tale win in the Grand Magic game because he couldn't handle the awesomeness that was fairy tale, I think. It was never really made clear, but he like couldn't handle the greatness of fairy tale. So he let fairy tale win. I'm not sure how to begin with what is wrong with that idea, but the problem is that it doesn't just end there. Another example is how Urza gets an armor in the Grand Magic game that, and I'm not even kidding you, can bend the laws of magic. So mind you, magic is this series power set. If you can bend the laws of the, power to, the powers your characters have, and there is literally no tension. That essentially makes Urza a literal god. I'm not talking about it in the way people call Naruto a god. I'm saying that literally makes her able to bend other people's abilities to her will. The source of other people's powers can be bent to her will. That is broken and that breaks all tension. The moment you hear it can do that, you're not like that really cool. You're like that really, really damn stupid. Then there's the fact that Natsu countless times in this series, I mean countless times, is on the ground, half dead, losing to the main villain who is stronger than him. He just gets up, punches the ground, and he's like, I'm not gonna let you hurt my friend, and he was just the main villain. You can't do that, all right? Friendship is not a literal power-up. Other shonen do do friendship power-ups, but either they do it like they do in Naruto, and then use my friends getting hurt to trigger a berserk mode, which I'm fine with, because if a character has like a demon in them or something, then them going berserk when they lose control of their emotions makes sense. The problem with all of this is that fairy tale doesn't give an explanation. Not to just get stronger these, than these people, because seeing his friends hurt makes them stronger. So you're telling me if I saw my friend get shot through the head, I'd suddenly be able to lift 35 pounds? No, that's not the way it works, hero. You need to explain these things, and Fairy Tail doesn't do that. 
And I think that is a major reason people don't like it. Because they, they have this feeling in their gut whenever they're reading it. Even if they lose, Natsu can just one-shot the guy that he won't want his friends to get hurt. And then why you read it? You know how the fight's gonna end. There's no chance of Natsu not winning the fight. No chance of that. He always wins. He's not to. And Nick was just not to, and at least you could tolerate it with other characters. Other characters get the power up thing well. And it's just it's so 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 bad. It really is. It just, it kills all the tension. There is a point in this manga where Urza cuts the meteor in half. When every bone in her body is broken. How does that even... Like, where's the sense of danger when characters can do things like that? There isn't any. There's no sense of tension. Therefore, you're never worried about the character. You're never like, is this character going to die? Actually, you're not... You're, actually, the reason you never see a character going to die... Speaking of which, why don't we talk about death and fairy tale for a moment? Or lack thereof death. The master of fairy tale. Their master... Your guild leader, whatever you want to call him, Makara, should have died, I would say, five times in fairy tale, from what I know. He should have died five times, but each and every time, when he was said to have died, he would come back to life. Really, nobody died in this series. There have been so many fake outs in this series. That eventually people just stopped caring. And I'm not talking about minor fake outs. I'm not talking like in Naruto when a shadow clone is destroyed and it disappears. I'm talking like full, like characters get full blown death scenes. They cry for the characters. I think there was a time where they even showed her the funeral. They mourn the characters. They're bawling their eyes out. They say their last words. And then something happens that lets them come back. And they don't even fully die. So there's never a point in the theory when you're worried about it. And even then, a majority of these characters aren't very likable. Every once in a while, you'll get a moment when you turn around and you're like, Whoa, is Lucy being a good character today? Okay, Lucy being likable for some reason. She's actually doing something interesting. And that goes back into character flaws. An example of this is Lucy and her crying. Lucy cries and hides behind other characters and it's like a dandel in distress so much for so long, people just stop caring. People are eventually just like, can Lucy just die? Can we stop watching people protect Lucy? This is boring. However, every once in a while, Lucy will do something cool, but even then, it's like, but you know, it doesn't matter. They're gonna be ruined by the chapter after that, somebody one-shotting somebody. Whenever Hiro Mashima has one of those strokes of genius and writes something really good, he finds a way to immediately undercut it and ruin it. And it's so upsetting. And one of the biggest problems with that is the fact that there is no death. Nobody dies in this theory. Ever. Not one person that was a member of the main cast or really even a background character died. The only character I know of that died was Future Lucy. And Future Lucy was just an alternate version of Lucy. So we didn't really lose anything at the audience. She was essentially just the same character, just a little, just, she just looked a little older. Even when the characters survive that thanks to a friendship power-up, they're not even well done. They're not even like in Naruto when you care about the characters and you're engaged in it and you're kind of like okay that's really endearing or touching so i'll let it slide no it's just really cheesy crap like i won't let you hurt my friend my family is the most important thing to me it's like i get it it's cool when it happens once or twice but when every single character does it it loses its meaning it's not special in naruto what made lines like because I'm your friend, Sasuke, so impassful, or because nobody else would ever say that to Sasuke but Naruto. That was why it was impassful. It had meaning because of the way it was set up. In this, it's just like every character gives these missions. Who cares? What is different from not do friendship power up beat? 
to lose these friendship power of be or her or grade friendship power of be and you know what why don't we talk about that why don't we talk for a minute about the individual characters? I'm going to talk about Urza and Gray. Urza and Gray are the first real new member to, I guess, Team Nasu, if people call it. They really are, and to be honest, they both stuck. They have the same problems everybody else in this series has, as I talked about earlier. They talk about friendship a lot. Friendship power up, they get stronger by the power of friendship. I guess Urza's kind of cool. I'll give Hero that. Like, the badass of the team is it's a female, which is very rare for anime and manga, but I mean, still? It doesn't really negate the fact that she's just not a great character. And I think Urza starts off actually very good. She has a compelling backstory. She has a great relationship with Jalal, and it's all very interesting. And then it kind of just whittled down the drain, and the, and the crappy writing, and the one shot, and the friendship power-up just pile up, and her stupid game-breaking, theory-breaking powers start piling up. You're kind of just like, it, 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 because she's Urza, you're kind of like, who cares at this point? You just stop caring about her as a character, and then Gray, I mean, Gray just there. He goes, oh, he goes through this like thing where he like pretends to be evil or turn and, like turns evil, and he's like, and it's like a complete recreation of the Final Valley fight between Naruto and Sasuke. Another major problem with there is that it rips things off. There's a lot of stuff from that are directly taken from Naruto and One Piece in this theory. Honestly, there's nothing for Bleach, and it didn't get cancelled. Just saying. But, no, but, I'm just saying, whenever Hiro Machima introduces something interesting, it's already been seen before somewhere else. Like, that thing with Grey and Nasu, when, like, Grey has the markings on his body, and he's thinking about fighting Nasu, and he says, we all think he's on the bad side. That is Naruto. That sounds a lot like Naruto. If it was the first time I have seen it, it would be the only very compelling, but it isn't the first time I've seen it, and I know we're taking from Naruto. There's even a scene where Nasu packs Lucy on the head and says, I promise I'll bring Grey back. It's literally a fairy tale version of a Sasuke retrieval arc, and that just assassinates Grey's character. It makes him completely uninteresting. He gets this, like, demon killing magic, it just doesn't work. None of this works. These characters are just, because of all the crap that they do that is bad, it actually undermines anything that is good about them to the point where I don't remember what's good about them. There's nothing, there aren't enough good, memorable things about them for me to talk about it. All I can remember is all the stuff that they did that I didn't like. And all the other characters that were better, that were like grounded and realistic, end up getting ruined. A great example of this, the reason most people drop the theory is when the lock said that I'm all fired up. That just killed it. It was like, so you just ruined Locks in character by having him say not do cast phrase. You just completely ruined him. Like, I'm sorry, if he's not doing one of the weakest characters in the series, and making Locks like it not do, making him like the character nobody liked, just didn't work. And it just, it really killed all dimension of disbelief for me. It killed my defense of disbelief, it killed my tension, it killed my care. I stopped caring at that point. I'm like, damn it, lost it, now you stuck too. And as I stated earlier, when the characters fight, I just don't care because there's no sense of danger because I know they won't die. And overall, then they're the that's of a villain because they're always one shot and don't seem intimidating. And when they are well done and they do seem intimidating, they're therefore ruined by having themselves one shot or they end up going on a monologue about how great fairy tale is or something before they die. The only thing that I still have going for it is that it has a really good mystery aspect. The mystery in fairy tale is really good. I'll give it that, but it doesn't make up for all the other problems in it. But at the end of the day, why do people hate fairy tale? Why? I think it's because as I talked about in the beginning, it had all this promise 
to be really, really good. But Hiromakima ruined it with all the stuff I talked about in this video. All the bad writing, and I haven't even gone into all of it. And I can't go into all of it, because that would require rereading Fairy Tale, which I honestly can't do because it's so bad. A leak with SAO. SAO is laughably bad. Fairy Tale is just. This isn't like. I can't watch this and make fun of it. It's just so bad. And it's so much longer than SAO. It's just not doable. Fairy Tale is a series with a lot of promise. And it just let the audience down. And I think a lot like with SAO. People feel anger because it could have been something really good and the author let you down and that's why people hate it. And the people wanted to like it. But the author let us down and we can't like it because it's really, really bad. That is why I think people hate fairy tale. That is the core reason. Because of all this stupid crap that in a theory with so much promise.